Wi-Fi baby monitors emit the same type of radiation as your microwave, except instead of heating up leftover pizza, they're pointed directly at your infant's skull 16 hours a day. So I bought nine of the most popular monitors, Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi alike, and tested them with a $200 professional grade EMF meter. What I found completely flipped everything I thought I knew about monitor safety. I'm Mark with Father Craft, and today I'm going to show you exactly what the data says, what it means for your baby, and which monitors you should actually be worried about. When parents ask, are Wi-Fi baby monitors safe? What they really mean is three things. One, can they be hacked? Two, what happens when your Wi-Fi goes out? And three, what about this thing called EMF radiation? In this video, we're focusing on question number three. Do Wi-Fi baby monitors emit radiation? But you should hit the subscribe button because questions one and two are legitimate concerns we'll cover in a future video. Now, before I show you the data, we need to talk about why this question is so confusing in the first place. Because if you go looking for clear answers on whether Wi-Fi baby monitors are safe, you won't find them. So let's start with what the industry wants you to believe. Now, you might be thinking, but baby monitors are FCC approved. They have safety certifications. There are standards. Yes, there are standards, but here's where it gets weird. Phones are tested against something called the SAM Phantom. That's Specific Anthropomorphic Mannequin. Basically, a fake head modeled after a 6'2", 220 pound military recruit. That test gives us a number called SAR, Specific Absorption Rate. Translation, how much radiation gets soaked up by a hunk of fake human meat. The FCC caps phones at 1.6 watts per kilogram. So yes, your iPhone was literally tested by blasting a plastic soldier head until it glowed like a Hot Pocket. Now, for reference, I'm 6'3", 230. Probably, my scale is hiding from me. And here's me holding my two-year-old son, Hank. So, these standards were designed for the guy on the right, but are being applied to the baby on the left. Now, baby monitors are tested a little differently than phones. They're classified as mobile devices that must be kept eight inches or 20 centimeters away from people. So instead of measuring how much energy goes into your head, the test is how loud is the signal in the air eight inches away, which sounds fine until you realize those limits were still built to prevent adult tissue heating. Then we sit these devices next to infants whose skulls are about as thick as a graham cracker. So when companies brag about meeting FCC standards, what they're really saying is, we've proven this won't cook an adult brain at eight inches distance, which feels like a pretty low bar for infant safety. But here's where this story goes from mildly concerning to genuinely what the actual f A brand new peer reviewed study from Setia, published in 2025 in the medical journal Curious, followed 105 babies for an entire year, measured the EMF radiation in their homes using medical grade equipment, and then tracked their development. And what they found should make every parent want to throw their baby monitor directly into the sun. In homes with the highest EMF exposure, infants were 2.74 times more likely to show fine motor delays and 3.67 times more likely to struggle with problem solving skills. That's not a little concerning. That's triple the odds in two core areas of early development. Oh, and living near a cell tower? No correlation at all. Which means the radiation messing with these babies wasn't coming from outside. It was coming from inside the home, from devices like this. Now, and this part is important, this is one study. It's a data point, not an ironclad verdict. It doesn't prove that every Wi-Fi baby monitor is frying neurons like bacon in a pan. It does, however, raise a very loud, very uncomfortable question. Why on earth aren't we using infant-specific safety standards for this? Now, you might think, well, okay, but if it's safe for adults, it's probably safe for babies, right? Wrong, catastrophically wrong. A baby's skull is two millimeters thick. For comparison, an adult skull is six to seven millimeters thick. That means a baby's skull provides about as much protection from radiation as a piece of cardboard from a cereal box. But it gets worse. 
Research shows that infants can absorb up to 10 times more radiation than adults from the same source in certain tissues like bone marrow. That's the difference between getting misted with a spray bottle and being hit with a fire hose. So when safety standards say, this is fine for humans, again, they're basing that on preventing tissue heating in adults, not protecting developing infant brains that are still figuring out how to make their hands work. Now, here's what's fascinating. Baby monitor companies clearly know that parents are worried about EMF. And they're not saying, relax, it's harmless. They're saying, don't worry, we engineered around it. Which is kind of an admission that there's something worth engineering around. Nanit designed a directional antenna. Miku claims a thousand times less radiation than a phone. And Owlet actually publishes their SAR numbers. So no matter what the marketing spin is, the fact they're even talking about this tells you everything. This is a real concern and they know it. At this point in our story, it's safe to say that I have become mildly obsessed. Everyone online says Wi-Fi baby monitors are dangerous. Buy non-Wi-Fi monitors instead. So I thought, fine, let's actually test that claim. So I bought nine of the most popular baby monitors on the market, six Wi-Fi monitors and three safe non-Wi-Fi alternatives, and then got one of these to test them. This is a Trifield TF2 a $200 professional grade EMF meter that measures radio frequency power density in milliwatts per square meter. This is what building biologists and EMF consultants use. Yes, building biologist is a real career. Apparently I chose poorly. Anyways, the point is it's not a $30 Amazon toy. And because I know you're wondering how I set up this test, First, I measured the background radiation in my house to create a baseline and then tested my Wi-Fi router and iPhone to ensure the device was calibrated. Then I set up cameras in realistic crib scenarios, wall-mounted positions both two feet and five feet above the device and collected a series of data over the course of a few weeks. Finally, I averaged everything. In fact, I feel so strongly about getting this right that I published my testing methodology and raw data. Check it out at fathercraft.com slash EMF. And what I found should make every non-Wi-Fi baby monitor company deeply uncomfortable. Let's walk through it. In most homes, background EMF is basically nothing. It's around 0.02 milliwatts per square meter. That's the quiet hum of modern life. Now let's talk about the usual suspects. Your phone while on a call and making contact with the meter averages around 1.0 milliwatts per square meter with spikes up to 14. Back it up to two feet, averages drop down to 0.2, and at five feet, down to 0.05. Your Wi-Fi router at contact averages 2.0 with peaks off the scale at 20 plus. Back it up two feet, down to 0.4. At five feet, 0.08. Why? Physics. Radio waves follow the inverse square law. Double the distance, intensity drops by roughly 75%. So distance from the source matters. Great, hold that thought. More on that in a minute. For context, the FCC public exposure limit is 10,000 milliwatts per square meter averaged over time. But remember, that's designed to prevent adult tissue heating, not protect infants lying next to a device running 16 hours a day. All right, so I tested nine monitors. Let me show you what I found. Now, before we dig into this, I want you to notice something. See these three monitors, the VTech, Hello Baby, and BabySense. These are the Wi-Fi free monitors, the ones commonly thought of as the safer alternative to the big, bad, scary Wi-Fi baby monitors. No Wi-Fi needed, hack-proof, radiation-free. Except they're not radiation-free, not even close. Let's start with the Wi-Fi monitors that everyone is supposedly scared of. Peaks at two feet, Nanit Pro, 0.35 milliwatts per square meter. Miku Pro, 0.35. Harbor, 0.61. Owlet, 0.62. Cubo, 0.94. And Cradlewise, 2.65, pretty low numbers, all orders of magnitude under the FCC limit. Most are barely above background noise. Now let's look at the safe non-Wi-Fi alternatives. Peaks at two feet, 
VTEC, 4.52 milliwatts per square meter. Hello Baby, 5.12. BabySense, 12.64. BabySense, the monitor that literally has sense in the name and markets itself as a non-Wi-Fi alternative emits 36 times more radiation than Nanit. 36 times. Hello Baby and VTech aren't much better. And here's the kicker. Every single one of these monitors, Wi-Fi or not, operates at 2.4 gigahertz. That's the exact same radio band. So what's going on here? How can the Wi-Fi monitors be so much cleaner than the non-Wi-Fi monitors when they're using the same frequency? The answer is painfully simple, engineering quality. The Wi-Fi monitors, Nanit, Miku, Harbor, Cubo, Cradlewise, and Owlet are made by companies with actual R&D budgets. They use directional antennas, which beam the signal where it needs to go, not everywhere. Power optimization, which means the signal is only as strong as it needs to be. And quality components, which means efficient transmission and less power is needed overall. The budget non-Wi-Fi monitors, they use omnidirectional broadcasting, which means they spray the signal in every direction like some possessed garden sprinkler. High power transmission, which means they crank the volume to boost the range and compensate for cheap components. And finally, no EMF optimization whatsoever. Because they're marketed as Wi-Fi free and safe, so why bother? It's the electromagnetic equivalent of the difference between a laser pointer and a floodlight. Same light, completely different delivery. And this matters because these budget monitors are being bought by the most concerned parents. The ones who did the research, saw Wi-Fi equals radiation, and specifically chose the non-Wi-Fi option to protect their baby. They paid $80 to $160 to expose their infant to up to 36 times more radiation than the $300 Wi-Fi monitor they were trying to avoid. And here's the thing. These budget baby monitor companies know this. They're not stupid. They just know that no Wi-Fi needed sells better than we cheaped out on the antenna design. Now, there is some good news here. Distance still matters. Look at the five foot measurement peaks. Baby Sense drops from 12.64 to 4.25. Hello Baby drops from 5.12 to 1.32. And VTech drops from 4.52 to 1.54. Still way higher than the Wi Fi monitors at five feet, which dropped to basically nothing, but it does show that distance is your best friend no matter what monitor you own. Even the dirtiest monitor gets dramatically cleaner when you just back it up a few feet. All right, now that I've scared the out of you, here's what you can actually do without moving to a cabin in the middle of the woods and putting grounding mats everywhere. If you're buying a new monitor, the data is clear. If you want a monitor with lower EMF radiation exposure, buy a premium Wi-Fi monitor. Nanit, Miku, Harbor, they're engineered to be clean. Yes, they cost more but you're not just paying for the extra features. You're paying for the engineering that makes them emit 10 to 30 times less radiation. If budget is an issue, buy one of the cheaper monitors, but mount it six plus feet away. Our testing shows that by doubling the distance, you cut exposure by 75%. If you already own a baby monitor, first, check your distance. Most people, myself included prior to this research, mount these two to three feet away from the crib. I've also seen a bunch of those cute little articulating arms that mount the monitor on the crib. Do not do that. Back everything up, six feet minimum. You can do this before your baby's next nap. It's free and it's effective. Second, smart usage patterns. Turn it off when no one's sleeping. Use audio only during naps if your monitor has that option. You don't need 24 seven live streaming like it's Twitch for grandparents. Look, I get it. This is terrifying information. Maybe you bought a Wi-Fi free monitor specifically to protect your child. And now I'm telling you that it might be doing the exact opposite. It's a bit like finding out that car seats are made out of dynamite. But here's the thing. You now have information that most parents don't have. 
you can make choices that dramatically reduce any potential risk while still monitoring your baby effectively. This also isn't about becoming a paranoid parent who wraps their house in aluminum foil. This is about applying the same precautionary thinking that we use everywhere else in parenting. We don't let babies play with small objects because they might choke. We don't give them honey because of botulism risk. And we baby-proof electrical outlets even though the odds of electrocution are tiny. So why wouldn't we take these simple steps to minimize radiation exposure when they're this easy and the potential consequences based on that 2025 study could affect your child's development. Your baby's brain is developing at an incredible rate right now. Every connection forming, every neural pathway being built, the premium Wi-Fi companies clearly think EMF reduction matters. They're engineering solutions and marketing their safety features. Maybe we should listen to what their actions are telling us. So here's what I'm doing. First, I've personally moved the monitor I use for my son, Hank, back a couple of feet. It's free, it's not really sacrificing image quality, and it feels like a no-brainer. Second, I'm publishing all of our testing data and our full methodology to fathercraft.com slash EMF. You'll find the chart we referenced in this video so you can compare your monitor against the others. Don't see your monitor? Drop it in the comments below. I'll see if I can keep updating this data over time. And please share this with other parents. Because right now, most people are choosing baby monitors based on Wi-Fi free marketing with zero idea that their $80 safe monitor might be pumping out 30 times more radiation than necessary. Your baby's developing brain deserves the same informed decision making that you'd apply to car seats, cribs, and baby food. So go check out where that baby monitor is mounted and maybe skip the baby sense. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Adios.